You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Excellent. It was, it was a rush, though. You always get butterflies. You know, when you're at the curtains, you know, right before you go out, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a rush. You always, always get nervous, which is a good thing to be nervous, you know, but, uh, but, but yeah, it was <laughs> surreal, really, when you, <laughs> when you're in the ring, you know, it's kind of a, but it's great when you know, have some great guys and good friends to help you out, you know. That uh my especially my partners and then uh and then guys guys on the roster, you know, that the Undertaker and all those guys can always give you a stop 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 you and give you advice, you know. So you always open your ears all the time. Well so, yeah. and Robert, I, I recently I was watching uh the on the WWE network they had the WWE rivals and it was a special about uh, Edge and Christian versus the Hardy Boys. Have you had a chance to see that yet? No, no, I haven't. I know okay. I, I don't. But they, I did they, see some of the matches over the years. Well, they, they show it. They show a squash match of you versus both the Hardys, uh, a handicap match where you're just destroying them, and and that just made me pop so hard. I thought that was awesome. You as the interrogator, so. I do, I did remember that match very well. This is before, before they pushed, they heard the boys got this huge push. Right. And so they were, they were only droppers at the time. And, uh, and they were great because they were very popular guys to it. We called it enhance, the superstars enhancements, I guess, but they called us the real technical term. Because they, they, they were willing to do everything. You know, I mean, of course, they the, the, you know, the huge bumps they would take for you. You know, they're, they're so easy to work. Work with and uh, yeah, they wanted to get me over as as uh, Kurgan. So of course, why not have a handicap match against two guys? And, and they really, you know, they really were, took huge bumps. I think I, I I remember where I grabbed. I think it was uh, Matt or Jeff. I forget. Jeff physically slamming over, landing on Matt's head on the on his. <laughs> 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 it was horrible. <laughs> But yeah, they made me look good too. And they're great guys. They were great guys to work with. You know, it's so easy. And I was so happy with them when they got, you know, of course it got over big time. I was the Hardy Boys, you know. So was, yeah, that was one of my highlights for sure. <laughs> hey, this is the Undisputed Wrestling Show, and we have the privilege of talking to Kurgan the Interrogator. And we're going to kick it on over to the NWA Continental Champion, the Morning Star, Will Huckabee, to get a wrestler's perspective. Will. Yeah, hey Robert. Uh, my first question is this: uh, Being a a legit seven footer, did you when you first got to WWE? Did you feel the pressure as a big man to uphold a certain standard? Uh, being the fact that uh, Undertaker was already there, they had Andre the Giant. Did you feel the pressure, or that you had to live up to a certain expectation? Uh, I think I did. Uh, when I started my career, I didn't know how to work as a big man. You know, I, I thought you could work like the style of, I was taking too many bumps when I was, you know, starting out. But they always, they always tell me, you don't have to, you're a big guy, don't take bumps. Take maybe one bump, you know, in, in a match. But basically, it's hard for the other guy, smaller guy, if my opponent is smaller than me, but just, you know, get the storyline, you know, the whole Goliath versus David storyline. And, but my, my gimmick was the giant. That's my, was my gimmick. And there was the whole point of, it's hard to take, taking me down. So, of course, when you, when I got into the WWF, the, of course, you got Taker, you know, the Undertaker, which I was, I had an edge over him in height. I did, I was kind of an inch taller than him. And, uh, but of course, it's, he's the main guy. He's the, the guy, right? He was the, the top guy. And then you had, at the time, they had Kane. Kane was there too, who was the big guy himself. But I, I was, Really taller than all the all of them, you know. But so I I didn't really have pressure on me as well, and I couldn't do the choke slams and the, you know stuff because it was all takers and King could do it, and I couldn't I couldn't do the choke slams. So all the big guy moves I couldn't do. <laughs> I mean, the main the main big guy moves, the finishers, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> so they, that was kind of a drag. Yeah, but and you have had the paralyzer. To, yeah, the paralyzer. But that, yeah, the, the good thing that Don Callis, who played it with Jackal, he he thought about that idea. And it was it was a great finisher too, because no, nobody was using it at the time for the longest time. And you can do it to anybody. You can do it to anybody, right? So, 
This is great. <laughs> we tried to get that over as much as we could. Yeah. Bringing up finishers and stuff, you use the Iron Claw, which is which is a, a for a guy your size, it's completely realistic. Uh, especially, I'm assuming that you have huge, you know, Shaquille O'Ne- Shaquille well, O'Neal skillet size hands. I do, I do have, <laughs> yeah, I do have big hands, so that was, <laughs> was, was an advantage. <laughs> now, with that, a lot of guys really haven't used that since then, except for the great Kali. Uh, do you think that because of you? Uh, it was acceptable for the great Kali to use that finisher and it still be realistic. Do you do you kind of feel that you know you, you your career influenced the great Kali? I don't know. I, I did. You know what? One time I did see uh, his match. <clears throat> I saw it was one of his matches, uh, and he was using the uh, the claw. It was like, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't know if it was influenced by me or not, or I'm not sure, because I wasn't, obviously wasn't there when they decided to use the car as a finisher. But it's pretty, it's not a, it's not a coincidence, I don't think. He's a, he's a enormous man. You know, and he's, <laughs> he's, huge. he's bigger than me, but uh, he's, he's huge. And using the paralyzer, you know, I think using, might be easier, because if they're using, I don't know if they don't think they might have been afraid to, to using like a power bomb, a big move to hurt hurt guys with, you know, something like that. <laughs> they were afraid of hurting guys, so the paralyzer is the easy sell, you know, nobody gets hurt. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you yeah, definitely... I, just, I just find it funny, man. Especially in this career where he was just a monster heel, and now it turned into this, you know, uh, romantic or uh, I forget. I don't I forget. But he was kind of a fun-loving giant. So it, it really kind of trajected my career too, as well. It's kind of parallel my career, which is funny. Yeah, I was, I was, I was gonna ask. That was gonna be my very next question. You know, from you going being a heel with the Jekyll, the Jekyll leaves, and now you're with the uh, insane clown posse. Right. Before I even ask about being a babyface, what is your opinion on the inside on ICP? Uh, a lot of people have a, a negative. Uh, st- uh, negative outlook on ICP because they're musicians who came into wrestling. A lot of people don't realize that they had a wrestling background. Uh, but how was it working with those guys? Um, well, there was some some some, some uh, advantages and you know, negative stuff about them. Uh, that working with them. Uh, well, the the plus side, the, the best thing they did is their music, is their in- the intro song was great. It was awesome. People really got into it, and that really helped the oddities got over, get to get over big time. And they were, they had their cult following, and every time they were with us, singing with us, rapping with us, uh, to go into the ring, you know, it was great, because they were, they were known, you know. And they, they were controversial, though, but they made us look cool, though. Made us pretty, you know, legit, or got us over, right? So that, that was a plus. Working with them was difficult. Uh, it was them, it was either them or their manager, I don't know. They were supposed to do this, involve <coughs> big pay-per-view, uh, in December, of uh, 90, uh, December of 90, December 98, actually, in Vancouver, where the ICP turned on us and sided with the headbangers. And, uh, so this big match with the oddities versus the headbangers and the ICP. And uh, so we was was big match was trying to get our revenge, to, to, you know, to, to beat up the ICP, what they did to us, because they turned out us to beat us up in one of those uh, law tapings. And uh, and for some reason they backed out because they made they thought getting beat up by by us would make them look bad, you know, would not help their their music music career. So they backed out. So that that really you know that wasn't cool. <laughs> it was on the cards. It was on the cards. It was, it was, it was, you know, it was announced. And then Oof. at the last minute, two weeks before the event, pay per view, they backed out. So that wasn't really cool, you know. Like, so, so they, yeah. Is it more difficult working as a as a being a big man? Is it easier to work as a baby face, or is it, or do you prefer working as a heel? Uh, which side of the table do you like to be on? <clears throat> well, I, I work both. When I'm when I'm in ho- I'm home here, you know, of course you're you're a baby face, uh, which is fun. It it is fun. Uh, I prefer being a heel because I was mostly a heel 
wrestling, wrestling, you know, when it was going overseas, you know, Japan or Korea or uh, Mexico was always a heel. And it is more fun being a heel. You can you can do a lot of stuff. You can get away with. You can yell at the crowd, you know, to to to, to tell them off or something. You know, just be an asshole. Because normally in my life, I'm not an asshole. I don't think so. <laughs> But I'm always a nice guy, you know. So being a heel, stuff you can do in the language is stuff you can't get away with in real life, you know. And that was an appeal to me, you know. But I like the being a heel. It's, it's, I don't know. I like the rush where, where, you know, where, the, where you get the heat. When you get a lot of heat, it's always fun. And it, to get the, to get the baby face over too. When they, when the, when the crowd supports the baby face, you know, get from, from, from you know, trying to get me down, trying to get, you know, get, the, get the big comeback at the end, it's always great, you know, so it's, that was, for me it was always fun being the heel, just being the bad guy, being the, the mean face and just yelling at people, mostly in French, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, yeah, I, I find that more, a little more exciting than being the baby face, for sure. 